Well, hello everyone and welcome to another very exciting episode here on the Am I Garter channel. We're doing something that we rarely get to do here, and that is harvest worm castings. A lot of times people wonder how we harvest worm castings, and we have done a video on that if you want to check it out. It was kind of a, it was a very elementary video, um, and it was not really ideal. Uh, we got ideal worm castings, but the method was not really that ideal. Um, since then we've kind of refined our methods and also we've got a lot more worm castings. It's been two years since we harvested So we've got about hundred and fifty pounds of worm castings here or kind of around there um, And it's it's impressive. So what we want to do is we want to just restart the worm bins It's smart to do that because over time your worm castings will begin to kind of deteriorate in their in their nutrient value And we want to do that before that happens around the three to four year mark um, some studies show that the worm castings begin to decrease in their in their nutrient capacity because of the fact that microbes in the soil will actually use up some of the nutrients in the worm castings. So um, there was one study that was saying that said about three years it started to drop off. And then there was another study that said uh, around the four year mark that significant nutrients were being depleted. So we're nowhere near there. These are still gonna have the most amazing nutrients possible and they're gonna be really awesome. So uh, we're gonna harvest them now. Uh, we got just this sifter that we made. Um, it's a really kind of homemade, old school sifter. Uh, we, we made some kind of uh, handles here just out of a uh, little two by two board um, and then wrapped it with cloth so no one would get any splinters and I'm also wearing gloves and stuff too. Um, but that's kind of just a soft handle. And then we just put a quarter inch mesh on the bottom. Ideally, we'd like to have 16th inch mesh. However, uh, we could not find any. So we just went with a quarter inch. That's gonna be fine. If you can find 16 inch, that gets the best quality and you're not gonna get any worms or worm eggs through. With this method, you'll get worm eggs to drop through. So there will, there will potentially be worms uh, in the future in, a, in our worm castings. So uh, they'll hatch and then they'll be in the mix. Um, but this should sit down most of the worms and what it'll also do is it'll sift out any like uncomposted stuff, any food scraps or twigs or whatever else is in here. Um, and if you wanna figure out how to make a sifter like this, we actually have, I'll post another card to the compost sifter that we made. And it's the same concept. It's just the, the screen size is different and the lumber is a bit uh, taller because we just use scrap stuff. This was actually pretty much a free project other than the, the cloth or the, the screen on the bottom. So. Check it out, it's super easy. It costs less than five bucks to make and most of the cost is in the, uh, most of the cost is just in, this, in the screen in the bottom there. So that's about it, let's get started. I think you all are really gonna enjoy this. So here is the worm castings before we've sifted any of them out. As you can see, they look great, super black, clumpy, and uh, there's not really any food necessarily that you can see. There might still be little bits and pieces, but there's not like whole apple cores in there. And part of the reason why there's no whole apple cores is because we actually blend our food before we put it in there. So the, so there's more surface area for the worms to digest and we tend to get faster digestion and faster worm castings by doing that. And all I've got here is just a five gallon bucket. This is where all of the uncomposted food scraps, worms and stuff that doesn't go through the screen. Sometimes the, sometimes the worm castings are wet and they'll kind of clump up. That's fine. We won't try to dry them out and re-sift them. We'll just uh, put them back in the worm bins and save them for another time. It's not a big deal. So that's what is all gonna go into this bucket. Woo, man, there's a lot of worms in there. These bins are healthy. There's a little bit of food there. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this clump here. I'm just gonna put that right in the bucket because this has a lot of worms in it. I'm gonna try to sift out the majority of the worms beforehand so that I don't screen a bunch of them, see? Look at all those beautiful worms. Absolutely beautiful. So I'm gonna put those in that bucket there so that I'm not screening a bunch of worms uh, through, the, through the screen there, or onto the screen. Because sometimes it can hurt a few worms. It doesn't always hurt the worms, but um, 
I'd rather be as gentle as possible to them. So I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna worry about getting them all, but just, you know, if I see a big clump of them, I'll pull them out instead of, uh, instead of trying to get the worm castings. Oh man, and I can't even tell you how amazing this smells. It just is so earthy, it's unbelievable. Man, we could have made a, we could have made a, a fourth or a fifth bin. And in fact, we might, uh, we might divide up the worm bins because there are so many worms in here. More than I, more than I thought there would be, to be honest. Oh yeah. That's working out good. I just gotta oh, find a way to rest a little bit. It gets heavy. I probably should have put that many worm castings in there all at once because they're wet. And so they're a little bit heavy. Whew, it's a workout, I'll tell you what. If you ever said workout, gar if you ever said gardening was not a workout, boy, were you wrong. So I was looking through the worm castings and I found this little gem right here. Now you're probably wondering, Luke, why do you have an Airsoft BB in your worm castings? Well, that's not an Airsoft BB, that's actually a worm egg, believe it or not. This is a, a single worm egg and uh, this is just, it's an amazing thing. I mean, it's so soft that you have to be super careful um, but it is like, it is like the caviar of compost. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, just so fun to to roll around and um, and to imagine that there's hundreds of worms inside this single egg. So I see a lot in the comments box uh, on worm casting videos and basically anything vermicomposting related, and it sometimes comes in the form of an attack or against using worm castings in the garden. Um, and it typically comes from people that feel that it's, uh, that you're doing the worms, a, you're harming the worms, you're doing them a disservice by keeping them locked inside of a box. And one of the most common arguments that I see is, if you were a worm, would you want to eat where you poop? And it's this common argument that I see a lot and it really prompted me to mention this, that if I was a worm, which I'm not, but if I was, I would love to eat where I poop because I'm a decomposer. So we really can't say, you know, if you were this, how would you feel? Because number one, you aren't, so you can't say how you would feel because you, you aren't a worm and you never were a worm and you can't speak worm language, so you don't know if they're in pain or not. But what you can go off of is the fact that they're decomposers, they love to eat, and they love to poop, those two things. And in nature, when they eat something, it goes in one end and out the other, okay? And they don't just keep moving in a, in a line. They make turn back. And so they're gonna be coming through their poop naturally anyways. And so yes, if I was a decomposer, I would love to eat where I poop. Unfortunately, I'm a human and that's unsanitary because I'm not a decomposer. So I just wanted to get that out there that I, I personally have no problem using worm castings. I know there are those people and you're entitled to your own opinion, but I think that it's important to put some reason into an argument before you make an argument so it's not open-ended. But that's all I got for that. Uh, progress report though, we're almost done. We are two and a half buckets in. And let me, let me tell you, um, if there was a way I could put some like coasters on this so it was easier to shimmy back and forth, That'd be great because right now the my neck and my lower back are really feeling it. So I have a feeling I'll be taking a nice hot shower after this to uh, soothe some of my muscles and then uh, ice packing because I tend to get a stiff neck when I do stuff like this. But um, just an idea for anyone trying these, if there's a way that you could establish like a, maybe like make a frame around the wheelbarrow um, and then have like little coasters on like wheels or something so that you could roll it back and forth. So it takes most of the, it's more load bearing than your back being the thing load bearing. So uh, just an idea for you. But uh, I better get back to work because these worm castings are not gonna sift themselves. All right, 
Catch you in a bit. So there you go. There is how I harvest worm castings. Very simple and very effective. So we were able to get almost a whole wheelbarrow full from uh, those three buckets. Now, again, we could have harvested a lot more, but we got about uh, seven gallons of worm castings that were too wet to go through and some worms and stuff as well. So we just figured we'll throw those in and it'll make a very good worm bin starter because as many of you know, I like to promote giving them a kind of an environment that they're used to because one of the biggest problems when starting up a new worm bin is the worms will actually crawl out of their environment if it's something that's foreign. So a lot of times people want to just start all fresh and they don't start with any worm starter. And so the worms, they get very confused and uh, they feel very disoriented. And so they will leave to try to find something more, um, whether it's uh, pH balanced to what they're used to, whether it's temperature that they're used to, uh, or sometimes it's uh, texture that they're used to. If it's something they're not used to, they will crawl away from it because they don't even think that they should be there. So um, again, we like to start with probably about two, two gallons um, in every worm bin that's all just kind of pre-broken down stuff that the worms have already been in and um, stuff that they're used to that they can call home. So hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the My Gardener channel, hoping you are growing big or going home. Catch you later. Bye.